Hello students, welcome to this demonstration class. In this class, I'll be doing a simple demonstration on a principle of moments. And then I will also show the effects of uptrust on the principle of moments. To carry out this demonstration, here I have the following apparatus. This is a meter rule, which I will use to demonstrate the principle of moment. This is a knife edge, and I have a support for the knife edge. This is a 100 gram standard mass, and a 50 gram standard mass. I have a beaker of water, which I will use to show the effect of uptrust on the principle of moment. Before I begin my demonstration, we need to look at the concept behind this demonstration. Moment. What is moment of a force? The moment of a force, simply put, is the turning effect of the force on a body. The force that produces a rotation a tony on a body is said to be moment. By definition, mathematically, the moment of a force is the product of the force applied and the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to the point where the force is acting. The product of the force and the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the point of rotation that moment and then the principle of moment which we are going to be demonstrating states that for a body to be in equilibrium under the action of forces the sum of the clockwise moment at a point by the forces must be equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moment of the forces at the same point. So from that definition, if I balance my meter rule at the midpoint of this meter rule, it is expected that as a result of the principle, the forces acting on this end of the meter rule we turn the meter row in this direction, which we describe as clockwise, according to the movement of the hand of your clock. While the forces acting on the meter row at this end, we turn it in this direction, which is what we call anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. So if this meter row is uniform, it means it is expected that it will balance at the midpoint. where the midpoint is the 50 cm mark because this is a 100 cm meter rule. At the 50 cm mark, it will balance horizontally. But like we know, if it is not a uniform meter rule, then it is expected that it will not be balanced at the 50 cm mark. So that is how we know whether a meter rule is uniform or not. Balanced at the 50 cm mark, it is uniform. So like we can see, it is balanced at the 50 cm mark, which means this meter rule is uniform. And this point where it is balanced is what we refer to as the center of gravity of the meter rule. Now to our demonstration. The 50 gram mass we will balance it at the 10 cm mark of the meter rule. 50 gram mass at 10 cm. Mind you, when balancing it, we must ensure that the mass is not oscillating. The mass is not oscillating, it means the mass must not be vibrating because that will affect the balancing of the meter rule. 
So this is one of the precautions that we take into consideration when carrying out this experiment under examination condition. Now, the 50 gram mass at 10 cm, the question will be, where will the 100 gram mass be for this meter rule to be balanced yet again? So to achieve that, we will move the 100 gram mass to and fro along this other end of the meter rule until we'll achieve our balance, which is the point where the meter rule will stay horizontally fixed in one position again. So like we can see, we have achieved balance yet again. The 50 gram mass is at 10 cm. The 100 gram mass is at 70.5 cm the length. So from this 10 cm mark to the 50 cm mark, which is the balance point, we need to know what is this length. 10 to 50. If from the zero end is 10, the 50 gram mass, from the zero end to the balance point is 50, then the difference would be 50 minus 10, which means the length from the 50 gram mass to the balance point is 40 cm. And because the mass is perpendicular to the length, we can apply our principle of moment, which means the moment of this mass will be the 50 gram multiply the distance. So 50 gram multiply the distance, which is 40 cm, will give us the moment acting on this end, which according to the movement of your clock is anti-clockwise. Then the clockwise moment given by the 100 gram mass will be the product of the mass 100 gram and the perpendicular distance, which is the distance between from the zero end to balance point 50 cm, from the zero end to the 100 gram mass 70.5. The difference will be 70.5 minus 50. That gives us 20.5. So the principle is saying that for this meter root to balance horizontally, the product 50 times 40 and 100 times 20.5 should be equal. That's what the principle is saying. Now, if we immerse this mass, the 50 gram mass in water, because of the force exerted by the water on the 50 gram mass, the mass of this standard will no longer be 50, it will reduce. This we know from our knowledge of the Archimedes principle, which states that when the body is partially or completely immersed in a fluid, liquid or gas, it will experience an uptrust, an upward force. And this uptrust is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body. And so, which means because of uptrust, the weight of the body reduces. And so, if there's a reduction in the weight, then this 100 gram mass will no longer balance at this point. The balance point will shift. So, let's do that simple demonstration showing that when the mass is immersed in water, the 50 gram mass. Because of the loss in weight, the 100 gram mass will no longer be balanced at this point, like we can see. No longer balanced, unless it is out of water. So we will need to move the 100 gram mass to a new location. to arrive at a new balance point.
here we have our new ballast point. So the location of the 100 gram mass is no longer at 70.5. It is now in a new location, which is 67.5. So the distance reduces because of reduction in the mass of the 50 gram mass. Because of reduction in the 50 gram mass. So this is the effect of uptrust on the principle of moment. So when a body is immersed in a liquid, it experiences an uptrust, which is a loss in weight. And that will inevitably affect its balance if it were in equilibrium. So this is our simple demonstration in today's class. Hopefully, in our next class, we will see how to take readings with this simple demonstration as it is done in an examination condition so that thereafter we can plot a graph with the values. If you have any question to ask, you have your notes and question plugin in the portal to take advantage of. Send me your questions, send me your observation, even your comments. You could also make contribution. I'd like to hear from you soonest, even before our next class. Thank you. Bye for now.